this is hard. Writing is hard. Hello, it's Wednesday the 2nd of March and I'm back from day job. I dilly dallied for an hour. So we're back. I'm really sleepy. It's been a struggle to return to this, but we're gonna do this. I recorded an update yesterday after, uh, right before going to bed, but the image quality was so bad that I might as well just give you a recap. As far as the run went, I wasn't able to figure out the sequence of mini events inside the fight scene. And I think it's because there are just too many characters involved in that fight scene. It, it's a very complicated scene. I couldn't visualize not only what characters were gonna be with what, what do we need to convey within the fight scene of all of the characters, and just the actual space of the village that we're in. If you're having issues with any type of framing or spatial issues of where to put everybody in terms of like choreography, always follow the story. What is, what's the story that you're trying to tell? Because even if it's a physical scene of action, there's a story underlining those scenes. So what what's exactly my story? And I, I know I'm conveying something, but I haven't put it down in words. So. As I was running, that was what I was realizing, that I'm not super clear on exactly what I'm trying to show within these mini fight scenes of the overall big fight scene. If I say those two words again, oh my god. So going to bed last night, I knew that the next day I will have to make a list of what are the exact storylines that are going to be featured in this grand fight scene and how are we going to present all of those storylines so that's what we're working on today probably won't get too much of a word count I don't know I also wanted to show you something because we're talking about fight scenes I wanted to show you something that I learned from watching um, a video on YouTube and I'm gonna put it here and I'm gonna link it in the description um, his channel is really awesome in analyzing cinema um, but he did a breakdown of the anatomy of a fight scene really well that I took notes. And funny enough, looking back at these notes, they are really similar to a basic story structure. The fight scene anatomy that we're talking about is, he breaks it down by the set, the rise, the twist, and the tie. The first scene is where you set the stakes and the characters. What is at stake? Who are the fighters? What is the arena and the environment? very much like in act one of a story. In more detail, the set would be where you set the stakes and the characters. The best stakes are personal and relatable. For the rise, this gives time for the audience to process this information that you just introduced and then elevate the action, which is part of the rise portion. Um, you increase the tension and the stakes and there's a second round of exchange of fighting. It's much more aggressive, it's pure action and the emotion is imbued within the movement. As for the twist, this is where things get switched. And much like in Act 2, we switch the world for the main character. Um, for the fighting, the twist is an aha moment or an oh no moment. In story, that would be the all hope is lost or it's a fake victory. I'm actually referring to Save the Cat on those terms. In Save the Cat, the end of Act 2 has that same component of the twist. And last but not least, with the tie, this is where the rise of the hero with their big change occurs, and it's an emotional conclusion, much like the end of a story. I found that really interesting because I was thinking, well, when did I actually, when did I write these notes? And of course I didn't put a date. September of two years ago. That was slightly before I was reading Save the Cat and doing more of a deep dive on story structure. So now that I'm reading those notes again, it is very interesting that the fight scene anatomy is pretty much a basic story structure anatomy. What I'm going to do is assign a note card to each character in that scene. In the note card, I'm going to list the things that we need to showcase in that fight scene. It'll be a good way for me not to forget the storytelling. So let's do that.
cool. So these are the characters that I was able to pinpoint what their purpose in the fight scene is. These guys I haven't, so I have no idea. This is Alice. These are the three knights that are with her and one of the female knights. Um, Clearly, I don't have anything planned for them in this fight scene, so are they just supportive characters or have I not dug deeply enough on their roles in their bigger story? The other thing, I don't want to spoil it, but I don't know when this one is introduced. I don't know what his if he's even going to be in this fight. Does that make sense? I kind of like the surprise later on. He might not even be in the scene. It might take away the impact for when he does come, but wouldn't it be awesome if he was here too, though? I'm so torn. I don't think I'm ready to write the scene yet. I think I need to figure out what to do with these guys. Given that we still need to figure out what to do with these characters in that scene, I'm not ready to write it. We need to brainstorm. What I'm gonna do is listen to music and more dilly-dally, I guess, until we can figure this out. Okay, so I made a list of the main things that need to happen and then I grouped up the characters that are supposed to be fighting together in the fight scene. The next step would be to place them in an actual map so that we can figure out the sequence of all those events and basically make sure that their movements make sense. That means we have to draw a map. I'm wondering if I should do that digitally or by hand. I think I'm, things are making sense doing them by hand like this. So that's what I'm gonna do, but these are too big for a map. So maybe I'll just cut these up. It's like a portion of them so that they represent like a smaller version. I know I said earlier that I was gonna jump into making the map, but I can't make the map unless I know the sequence of events that are supposed to happen in that scene so that I know where to put everyone and have those events happen. Like, duh. Especially since some of these events affect each other. Definitely needed to outline in more detail the scene before moving on to the map. I just used a Kanban board on Notion so I can move around things that need to happen and play around with the order of them. In doing that, I did figure out the rest of the characters in terms of what they're supposed to be doing in this scene. So we're getting stuff done, you guys. Things are happening. I am so shocked that this isn't as painful as I thought it was going to be. I had to move my light because this camera just won't focus right now. Exactly, this. What is going on here? Jonathan's gonna be working late, so I have no excuse in not finishing the work that we need to do tonight, which is setting this whole fight scene up so that tomorrow we can write it. What's left is the map. We need to draw the map of this village where the big fight scene is going to occur. In walking our dog, I had more ideas of how the group is going to approach the village. I thought of a better way that is going to connect two settings. So originally this fight scene was gonna lead to a new scene at a new setting. And I thought that maybe it's not necessary. Let's combine the two into one setting. Being that it's a comic, we don't want to waste pages. So I'm glad that um, during my walk, I was able to think of a better way of connecting the two scenes together. It's all gonna be in the same village and it's gonna have a much more clever, I don't wanna say twist, a nicer surprise, I think 
is a better way of saying it. All these ideas, they're fresh, they're coming in. If I can get this done, I will be very happy with today. Let's get to this map. we finished it's exactly nine o'clock which means i still have like an hour to wash my face and read here's the map i thought i was gonna use the south side of the village but um i learned so maybe i should i should probably backtrack so i am basing this village on a real place do i know a lot history about that place no because we're confronted with the same issue where I don't have the resources online to see into more detail what this place was like in the Middle Ages. So I don't know if there was a lord, if um, how how did the fort look like? Because in this village there used to be a fort. What I need in the story for it to have is a big church and a large enough semblance of a village. That's it. Oh, and he needs to be nearby the main town that this story is based in. If it checks off all those things, then we should be good to go. Why did I end up doing the top half and not the bottom half? Well, the bottom half looked really cool, but there is a gate at the bottom half, which means that if there was an attack, that gate would have been closed. Our characters wouldn't approach that village directly into a gate guarded gate. Does that make sense? They'd go from the top where clearly there's no wall or anything so it is a vulnerability. I just didn't realize that until after I drew the map. But whatever, there was enough room so we did it. In retrospect, this might be kind of a mess to reference later on but in doing it I was able to figure out a ton of stuff so was it worth it? Yes. Will I be able to understand this in probably next year when I'm actually drawing it? Who knows? On that note, I've been reading uh, these this fantasy series. I'm just gonna put it there because I don't remember the name of it. Um, I, I'm not really liking it at all. It's a mess. But the only thing that's getting me through it, the only reason I borrowed the sequel and now I'm on the third book um, from the library is just because the romance plot hasn't been concluded. So I'm literally only reading it to try to figure out what happens to the romance. Genius on the author. I don't know, it's a little clunky. Um, but I do care about the romance, so I'll definitely finish that third book today. I will see you tomorrow. Good morning! <clears throat> it is 10 o'clock, which is very late usually for me to start writing, but I had a pretty slow morning. I got stuck reading this book by one of my favorite authors, Sherwood Smith. It is good! I'm only 40% in and I'm dying to go back. So I'm thinking that I should do some Pomodoros and reward myself with uh, more reading. I'd rather be reading than writing right now. Hi, Huck! What's up, buddy? You had a good walk, huh? Because we're having a slow morning, our first word sprint is going to be only 15 minutes. We'll start, we'll start slow. It's two o'clock. After that 15 minute sprint, have I continued to write? No, I haven't. I've gotten so distracted, I don't want to write, and I am 
just frustrated at my lack of productivity. I hate that I'm not consistent. I can go hours and hours working and then I hit some kind of roadblock and then I'm scrolling through YouTube looking at the news or something else. Anything but doing the thing that I have to do. And it's super disappointing. I gave up and ate some lunch, made coffee, so let's try this again. <laughs> try this that we were supposed to do this morning. That was the first sprint. We did 300 words. Was it painful? Yes. Did we get it done? Also yes. Should I take a break? No. If I do, we'll never get back here. <laughs> it's been half an hour. I got, let's see how many words I got. I only wrote 130 words. I am writing so slow. This is, this is torture. I made pumpkin tea. We're gonna get back at this. Kitty, what are you doing? Meow, meow, meow. Oh, kitty. <sighs> Maybe I should talk about what it is that I'm writing. I haven't even gotten to the actual fighting part. I'm still at the part where the characters are outside the area and they are literally going in. That's where I'm at. That's where I finished. This is like pulling teeth. <sighs> Maybe I feel like I think it's imposter syndrome kicking my ass again because I don't think that I'm writing anything good, which is ridiculous because Objectively speaking, I don't I don't think what the scenes that I wrote are good or bad. They just are entertaining. That's it Le Like neutral. I don't think it's that bad, but for some reason I'm dragging my feet thinking that there is no way that I am capable of writing a good scene What's the point? I, th I think that's what's zapping my motivation no matter how much planning and build up work, once you actually sit down and get the words out, like that is, uh, this is hard. Writing is hard. Oh. All right. Let's do a 20 minute sprint, somewhere in the middle. Also, Jonathan just called me. He's on his way back from work. He's still gonna work from home, so that's nice. We both get to work together in the same room. Maybe that'll help me stay motivated, seeing him working. Cause clearly you're not helping. I'm still dilly-dallying. 20 minutes, here we go. a benedicting monk like how do you address him <laughs> another random thing to look up so i read that his brother like brother norton 200 words in 20 minutes still really really slow but i didn't get distracted so progress
it's 6 45 and i just got back from a run i really needed it because like i said runs are really good for me to figure out action scenes so i was rerunning all these fight sequences honestly i think that this whole section of the story is gonna improve a lot upon revision i think right now th the best that i can do is just gonna be really clunky stuff with lots of holes like plot holes um during the run i was realizing that there uh, i like for example i just realized that th i there's no moment of alice explaining what the game plan is when they move forward with the assault? How, how do you not have a discussion with your teammates about what you're gonna do? It would be really important. These little pockets of ignorance, I guess, I, I think I think all writers have this issue. They just tackle them on revision. I'm trying not to freak out too much about how imperfect this whole thing is being written. I just need to focus on getting through it. scene I have the group separate so now I have to think about which group to show in what order I wanted to open up the second scene with a crossbow being shot out but the person who's shooting that crossbow they're not in the position for the second group they're in the third group looking at the map of that village that I'm using as a reference it is helping me because I'm trying to see if the corner that I'm using for some of those sequences if we can put it somewhere else and we can't I don't think we can I think we're gonna stick to the original plan it's 10 o'clock I've been writing in the kitchen nothing really new to report I'm moving on to tea and usually I carry hot water in here and pour it as I go into the teacup because I hate drinking cold water um, that will hold a ton of hot water for me to do refills. The issue here is I want to use this thing, um, but I can't steep the tea too many times because then it loses flavor. But then just one serving of this isn't enough tea for me. So I'm trying something new where I can fill this whole thing with hot water and steep that and use it to refill my teacup so it's basically like i need a teapot that will contain already brewed tea but the teapots don't keep the tea hot if there's such thing as an insulated teapot let me know but in the meantime i'm gonna see if this is gonna work it's a pumpkin tea but this is how desperate i am for Hot tea refills. I can keep being fancy. Where we're at with the fighting, we are halfway. I, th I think we're halfway. We've already had like four fighting scenes. And I think there's one, two, there's only three left. We're gonna get there. And it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. I started writing at seven. I already had breakfast, so there's no more excuses for dilly dally. <sighs> I just spilled the last bit of my tea here, which I think, and I had lunch. Um, I think it's time for coffee. <laughs> We're at the 70% mark of this whole fighting section of the story. And now I have to change pants. It's 2.30. I'm almost done. The cutest parts have been written. I know, cute parts in a fight scene. Very weird. It got really dark in here because it's super cloudy, but it only says 50% chance of rain, so doubt 
it's gonna rain. I know it's early, but it's nice to have the lights on. And we're going to raise the standing desk. We're getting there. We are 1,500 words in. Finished. That makes for a total of 2,000 words today. And the entire section that we've been talking about this whole week is uh, 4,000 words long. Man, that was, that was a struggle, getting all of those words out. It was more the choreography of it, getting the details of that whole sequence figured out. What did I learn from this? Maps help. Maps are really helpful. I kept going back to this map and making changes. So I actually had to add another map here. This is a more detailed version of that corner. I'm really hoping that this is gonna make sense when I'm actually thumbnailing the script. Pray for me. I know how it's supposed to end, um, but past Jasmine wrote the end portion of the outline very vaguely. So I am again confronted with this issue of I'm going to have to really flesh out the details before jumping into the writing again. That will be the next thing that I'll be vlogging. If you aren't following my channel, you should. Go subscribe, hit the bell button. Thanks for watching my vlog and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Sometimes I think that I don't have a cat, I have an animatronic.